Hey everybody, this is the first of hopefully a few videos I'm going to be doing. Uh, I recently purchased a revenue cutter kit from Blue Jacket Ship Crafters up in Searsport, Maine. My weapon of choice model ship company made in the good old USA. Uh, let me zoom in on this guy. All right, so before I do the inbox thing, uh, basically the history of this cutter is uh, she, she's depicted, she's the a 31 ton revenue cutter. Uh, this is based on drawings by Howard Chappelle. And if you're into model ships and you don't know who Howard Chappelle is, you probably could pick up a couple books. Uh, a couple I'm gonna look at here. History of American Sailing Ships. I'm sure you can get this on Kindle Edition or whatever, but uh, they haven't really done a new edition in a while. Uh, and I don't think they ever will. So if you get an older edition, it's just as good as a new one. And they come with a pretty good amount of ship's plans in there. Uh, you can also, if you want to, uh, it's a little more brief, but the American Sailing Navy has some diagrams, as you can see. This is page 372 of this vessel. And uh, basically it's got the schematic of the 31 tonner doesn't really talk a whole lot about it. The interesting thing about this design is uh, it's there were three revenue cutters built in about the same time period that had the exact same lines. They were just slightly bigger or smaller depending on the tonnage. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, all right. So here we see uh, this is what a the this is the 31 ton model, which is actually the one depicted in the blue jacket kit here, and this is what it would have looked like under sail. If I can zoom in on that without being obnoxious, uh, so it wasn't a huge boat. Uh, the length on this thing was, uh, I think, uh, if I'm not incorrect, I think link overall was less than 50 feet. So, it, you know, that's the size of a good-sized cabin cruiser. Uh, if we look over here, this is the 51-ton revenue cutter, of, also of 1815. If it looks similar, just larger, you'd be 100% correct. So, um, let me zap. I love flipping through pages on videos. It makes you feel super, super awesome about it. So... Let's look to page like 191 in the book here. So again, here's the revenue cutter. Uh, this is the 31 ton, which is a kit depicts. The biggest difference is obviously length. The, the depth in the hold in this one is about five feet. So it didn't have a lot of depth, which means, you know, it was uh, pretty, uh, pretty low in the water. But you also see it, it had a really fine skag to it, which means it goes up to the rudder and back down again. So, uh, if you flip over, these are the line diagrams. Let me just flip it around here. Line diagrams of the, uh, this is the uh, larger one, the 51 ton. And realistically, the differences between these cutters were really just size. The depth of hold for this one is six feet. The other one was five feet. This one's about 56 feet long, vice uh, 50. Then we get to uh, the largest of the three uh, identical drawings, and we see that this is a 80 tonner. Now, uh, depth of hold on this, sorry, is six foot nine. You also notice that the skeg is not nearly as defined uh, because it's slightly longer and it draws a little more water. The skeg is not nearly as uh, as defined. Basically, the if you look at the the breath diagrams, you'll notice that you just don't have quite the the flare in the back as you would have 
uh, the other two models. Again, if you take a look at that, if you look at the way the stern is all the way to the keel, it has a, a really big tumble home on the keel. Zoom in on that a little bit. So that's going to be fairly important in creating your model of this particular cutter. Now I've kind of got that out of the way. There are other manufacturers that make a very similar kit. There's one by uh, Amati. I think there's one by Mamoli. But uh, depending on which one you get, they both say that they're in like 148 to 150 scale. So I think they are basically models of different size cutters because one of them is listed as the Cutter Dallas. And if you build it, you'll notice it's, it's significantly larger than this model would be. But I believe that model of the Dallas is the 81 tonner. The Amati one, I think it's just listed as revenue cutter. Sometimes it's listed as revenue cutter ranger. Uh, that cutter, I believe, is the 50 tonner. And this will be the smallest of the three. So without further ado, I have not opened this box yet, but I have seen this kit a few times. So as always, with Blue Jacket kits, you get a incredibly inclusive building manual. And uh, this one's got some got some heft to it. There's some stuff in here. So it says the, uh, the official listed scale for this is 148, which is one quarter scale. It's based on the William Dowdy design, 31 foot cutter, 31 ton cutter, sorry. But check this out. So this is from Nick. And Nick says, basically, if you post this stuff to Model Ship World, he'll give you a little discount next time. It's good through at least 2020. I don't know. Nick's not that young, but he's definitely going to make it through 2020. Uh, so I don't, I don't know why he put an end date on that. I'm sure he'll go longer if you ask him. Um, so basically, there's the uh, guarantee for all these Blue Jacket kits. Uh, Nick is the guy that I go to uh, for advice on these kits. He's super approachable. He's always on Model Ship World. I love dealing with people at Blue Jacket. And uh, again, talks about paints. So anyway, uh, they, they have kind of a, a folksy way of describing things in methods. So uh, regardless, I think that you can definitely uh, get a lot out of this. Uh, Charlie is the guy that pretty much designed the kit and got it ready for for manufacture. He's one of their uh, their prime builder guys. He looks grouchy, but he's actually super friendly. And the other person you might deal with is Trish. This is a shout out for Trish since she asked me to do this video and gave me a slight discount, not going to lie. But uh, she's super approachable. She handles a lot of the business admin stuff. Now if we look at the kit, basically it talks about building the cradle, doing some of the other ancillary things. Uh, so it's kind of a, a blow by blow, but unlike other ship models, which kind of just gives you like really hard to look at schematics, this is giving you an actual photo of what these pieces should look like after they're completed. So it, it's nice the way they did that. Um, and again, each each one of the callouts talks about the notes. Run HP line cake up beeswax prevents fuzzies. Uh, pretty much uh, any tips and tricks they have are going to be helpful in the general overall build. So, and of course, the overall parts list. Uh, this, this revenue cutter does not have that many parts, so it should not be a daunting build, even if you're a first-time uh, first vessel builder. The, so if you look in the and I get that done. You get this big kind of thing of wrapped up paper. It is not just packing. That is actually the hull. So if you're one of these people that likes to flip through a box and just start throwing away packing material, just know you could be actually ditching the majority of the model. Uh, this is a solid hull kit. Sorry, I'm trying to do this one-handed. Reach in here. ditch that. So, that being said, 
solid haul. Uh, if someone breaks into your house, you could easily use this to bludgeon them, probably to great injury. But uh, the deck is really flat, and that's actually the way it's designed. The, uh, the rudder hole, the skeg hole, all those are lined up. Uh, the only thing that, if you look at it, if you look at the stern, and you think back on the diagram I just showed you, the stern really, you're going to need a lot of sanding to get this to uh, mimic the way the actual ship looked in the real world. So you're going to have to do a lot of uh, sanding or shaping. Recommend, uh, you know, there are plans in here and you can actually kind of use a pencil to uh, draw out the diagrams as far as how thin or thick this needs to be. But you're definitely going to have to whittle this thing down quite a bit. Now, if you don't, will it still look like a great ship model? Absolutely. Will 90% of the people on the planet know the difference? They absolutely will not. So, but if you're like most ship modelers, you will know. So, and that'll bug you, bug you to no end. So, all right. Now, being that the uh, company's from Maine, they have uh, no phobia of providing you with huge quantities of paper plans. You get the normal copyright notice. And again, it's what it looks like. It's very basic. Uh, this is a, this isn't, it's an ensign build, but it's a slightly higher ensign build. But what's really nice about this is it's one of their more modern kits. So they've done a lot of laser cutting. Uh, and the other nice thing is because it's a fairly easy build, you can try some different techniques on this kit to maybe dress it up a bit. Like, for instance, this says that uh, the hull and rudder below the waterline are copper. Well, they were copper, but they were the typical copper plate of the time. So if you want to be fancy, instead of just painting it copper, you could try your hand at, at uh, laying copper, uh, basically anti-fouling plates on the bottom to make it look really nice. So anyway, that is the plans. I'm not going to flip them all out on you because, like I said, I'm doing this one-handed, so I'm having a heck of a time with this phone. Anyway, Britannia fittings, all vacuum sealed. That's what it looks like. You have the coveted revenue cutter service flag, a.k.a. future Coast Guard flag. Uh, revenue cutter service was the forerunner of the Coast Guard. I should know. I'm in the Coast Guard. Yay. Shameless self-plug. Uh, they use some high-quality line. I re always recommend beeswax, but the way this line uh, operates, you probably could get away with not. But if you're going to do it anyway, why not? Um, various dowels and masks and spar material. This is uh, kind of the piece de resistance in my mind. You can't really see it because it's flipped around in the bag. But if you look at the way the deck is done, you can kind of see it. It's all laser cut in place, but in addition to the laser cut, it's got the actual deck bungs laser cut out as well. So it's a really slick with how this is done. This deck is amazing. And you put a little bit of stain into this, leave it its natural wood color, and possibly use uh, some highlight color on the deck planking itself. This thing will pop and look amazingly complicated and not be that complicated. Uh, the laser cut parts are fairly standard fare, except for they're really, really sharply done. So some of the older kits, you'll see the laser cutting is not as good. This is a brand new kit. For Blue Jacket, just the uh, last couple years, I believe. And again, there's the uh, there's the uh, dowels and spar making material. This is a two-masted vessel, and there is no sail material that uh, they've given you. You're going to have to provide your own. You have a couple different options of that. You can put her under sail. Uh, putting the sails on uh, should not be that difficult. You can either put them uh, fully kind of either 
fully uh, engaged, like fully rigged, or you can kind of put them battened down uh, and uh, kind of tied down to the spars and the, uh, the mast. So your call, uh, I think the boat would look just as good bare bones because uh, despite the austere deca de sorry, details, I think uh, the deck alone will make this thing pop really well. Other things you're going to note on this particular class of cutter that you can't really see from this photo, but uh, because this is such a small cutter and they were going to have to operate in shoals and, and uh, really close in areas and maybe not have so much, so much uh, luck with the wind, there are actually four oar lock uh, things, four oar lock positions that you uh, you could also put you know, the crew would basically, once the wind died down, if they needed to get inshore, they could pop the oars out and they could row this thing home. You also see that there's no, there is no uh, built-in rail or fife rail or any of that stuff. Uh, basically, that was to uh, kind of allow the crew to uh, row easier and to cut down on the weight of the vessel. Uh, this thing would, if it had a solid bulkhead or a solid uh, taff rail, it would have been very top heavy. Now, with that though, you still needed, they call them buckboards. The buckboards would have been around the, uh, the jib and the, and the uh, bow spirit. Those uh, basically were to keep water basically from splashing over the front of the vessel. And of course, you've got some other accoutrements like the, uh, you've got the uh, cook stove pipe, and of course you've got the uh, 360 swivel gun in the middle, which was a, a can cannonade. There are a lot of historians I've talked to, and this is my own personal research. Uh, pretty much the revenue cutter service, uh, much like the Coast Guard today, didn't have a huge budget. So whatever they could find for armament and ordnance, they would use. This was anything from no guns. So uh, the kit actually has a, a really nice... You know, the, the cannonade itself is a, is a kit onto itself. It's got some really good details. But uh, if you didn't want to put that on there, uh, obviously the, you can kind of zoom in on the rings there. The, the rings on the deck would have, would have been there anyway, or they would have mounted a, uh, maybe a six pounder or three pounder on this position. But the historians say that a lot of these vessels didn't carry any uh, large armament. They would have carried uh, smaller, like, falconets or swivel guns. And the swivel guns would have been mounted on maybe some of these handrail posts. So if you don't, if you want to make a super accurate revenue cutter, you can pretty much put whatever you want in the middle. In the absence of a, of a gun in the middle, you could also get yourself a nice, like, 148 scale uh, uh, small boat, like a captain's gig or a jolly boat or a uh, just a small... Uh, some kind of boarding boat that the revenue cutter service would have used to uh, board vessels at anchor or vessels at sea or vessels coming into port. So I'm going to do one more. Oh, sorry about it. I'm going to try and get. Sorry about that. Uh, so the other part of you is, uh, hey, I want to make sure I'm building the hull right. I want to make sure I'm not over sanding. I'm not going to uh, mess this up. These are known as the stations, so each one of these corresponds to a certain part of the hull based on the original Dowdy drawings. So you can see, obviously, station zero is right there, station one half, one half. It goes all the way to the uh, transom, which is listed as T. Now, at the transom, you'll notice that this little groove is literally the back of the boat. So if you remember, me showing you the hull at station eight. Here's what this should look like. So from the transom, it should be like a crazy, just a really razor thin stern with the rudder all the way down to the back. So here's what you can do. You can actually copy these, either uh, you know, photocopy or whatever, cut them out, glue them onto a piece of wood or cardboard or something. And you can use them as, as cutting guides or sanding guides to actually get the correct shape of the hull. So between 8, if you go to 7, you can see how it, it flares up a bit. So it's 7, that's the station at 7. 
and uh, basically you would transpose all of these onto the hull of the ship. And it's all for me, Grog, me jolly, jolly Grog, all gone for beer.